Welcome to episode of Singapore Real Estate Explained, where we break down real estate investments in the simplest way possible. So today, we're going to talk about an uh, interesting topic called sub-sale. Okay, so why we're having this topic over here. So why we're approaching this topic is because we have seen that quite a few new launches condominium has started to collect their keys and this is some common topic that uh, people have been talking about and we want to assess it so that we want to un let uh, most of our consumer understand the pitfalls or things to take note when it comes to selling your brand new TOP units okay so without further ado let's go so what exactly is a sub sale? So a sub sale occurs when a property buyer actually buy a new launch unit from the developer and decide to sell the property to another buyer before the development is completed. Okay, so the common misconception people have when they think of the development being completed is that they think completion is when you collect key, but that's not true. Okay, completion of a property usually comes one year after your key collection. So technically, if you were to sell your property before your uh, that one year, okay, means uh, even upon key collection, it's still considered as a sub sale, okay. So the key thing is one thing. Take note, we'll see later on is it's not like a normal private residential sale. You have to take note a few things when it comes to selling a TOP project or a sub sale project, okay. So let's take a look at why exactly do sub sale happen. So one thing to take note is, uh, two things to take note is number one, usually there's a change in financial situation for the original buyer. So a lot of buyers who actually buy this unit, maybe they actually want to stay there. Okay, I, in fact, I have some of my clients who want to do that. But at the end of the day, when it comes to three years, when they collected their key, they say, hey, actually, I don't think I want to stay. I want to sell it off to change it to an asset class somewhere that I like, a location I like. So it's usually due to a change in situation, either financially or even in terms of family needs. The second most common reason when it comes to sub sale units are because the seller actually want to cash out their capital gains to, to invest in NR units, okay? Which is something that most of our investors actually do in terms of sub sale. So take note, some things that we have to take in consideration for sub sale units is this thing called seller stand duty, which is known as SSD. So what exactly is a seller stand duty? It's basically a tax you have to pay if you were to sell your property within the first three years of buying it. Okay. So a lot of uh, clients may ask, when does the three year starts? Okay. It starts not when you collect key. Okay. Some buyers have that misconception. It starts when you actually exercise the unit. Okay when you buy the new launch. So what the exercise mean? It means you confirm your purchase. Okay, when on the day of balloting, you get your OTP, you actually take five weeks before you can actually confirm the purchase of the, of the property, you No, know, exercising your purchase. So take note is that this particular SSD, if you sell it within one year from purchase, it's a 12% seller stamp duty tax. Okay, and if you sell it in two years of purchase, it's 8%. If you sell it three years of purchase, it's 4%. And take note, once after these three years, there is no seller stamp duty. That's why over here you write, it depends because your seller stamp duty, if you sell it after three years, for example, you exercise your unit as a new launch, it may be January 2021. Okay, so your seller stamp duty will be in January 2024. Okay, once after that date, you don't have to pay any seller stamp duty. So take note, if the condo, okay, took five years to actually build out and complete, okay, you can actually purchase your unit in the first year and sell it on the fourth year. So you can clear your three-year seller stamp duty period. All right, so there's something to take note. Okay, so the question is, okay, now we're thinking seller perspective, why they sell? So why people actually buy your sub-sale unit? So one thing to take note, for this is usually due to two main reasons, once again. One is because it's a brand new unit, fresh out from the oven, people cannot wait. It's like, as well, you know, like a lot of young couple nowadays, they're looking for a new BTO, but they cannot wait for that five years for it to slowly build to construct. So they're willing to pay a higher premium, usually, to buy into a brand new unit that's ready-made, okay? And this is also linked to the fact that it has shorter TOP period, okay? In some cases, okay, the unit is actually sold before you have key collection. Okay, these are very special uh, cases. Uh, usually, a only a few units are sold 
even before you collect key. But the beauty of it is that, okay, besides the fact that uh, you can get a brand new unit, you typically wait for a short period of time. Okay. And in some cases, some of the TOP uh, uh, units that you're buying, okay, as compared to you buy right now, before you collect key, may at times be cheaper. Okay, one more time. When you buy into a subsidy unit before you collect key, at times you may get a cheaper price as compared to when you buy a unit when it's ready, when key is collected. So there's some cases where we basically tap into this kind of opportunities for some buyers, in fact, to actually buy into a, a lower price unit. All right. So next up, let's take a look at some of the things that we have to be careful when it comes to selling your sub sale unit. Okay, the first common mistake that people do make, okay, for sellers when it comes to selling a sub sale unit is they don't know that they have a prepayment penalty when it comes to selling a sub sale unit. Okay, and this is linked to the bank loan. So one common uh, mistake that people make is think that hey, after the three years, you know, they no, they think that there's no lock in for your bank package. So they, they think that hey, if I sell after three years, there shouldn't be any penalty. Okay, but be 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 careful because banks do not usually openly tell you this, but take note is usually when it comes to buying a new launch, okay, it's in progressive payment. Means you don't pay the full loan right from the start. Okay, whenever a certain stage is reached in terms of construction, that's when you allow a certain amount of loan. And upon TOP, okay, upon TOP, take note, is that you basically uh collect your key, but as I mentioned, the unit has yet to hit this thing called CSE, which is Certificate of Statutory Completion, okay, which is one year after a key collection. So usually, there is some bank loan that's not dispersed yet, maybe 8% or 15% depending on the stage that they are open to release. So if, for example, when you, when you sell your property okay, upon key collection, there's still 15% of the, the, the property price of that bank loan that's not dispersed. Maybe a 1 million property, you have 150k of loan left. That is not dispersed from the bank. Take note, it's actually in the fine print in your bank loan. When it comes to selling the property, for some banks, they may incur a prepayment penalty, okay? Which is 1.5% of your undisbursed loan amount. So if for example, you have 100k left, that will close to $1,500, which is, okay, not a big sum, but it's something you still have to take note when it comes to selling and factoring into your profit margin. Okay, but if you know how to find a good banker when you buy a new launch, you should actually look into fine print to find a bank that can allow you to sell off without this prepayment penalty. Okay, so it's something that you have to take note, especially when the property price you're buying is at three plus million, four plus million. This amount can go up to 10K to 20K. So there's some things you have to be aware about. Okay, and next up, when it comes to sub sale uh, property, take note is try to find the right kind of unit when it comes to us uh, buying in the first place. Okay, why is it important? Because the size of it matter, okay? Depends on the district demand. So for sub sale unit, you realize that because we have been in the market selling this kind of unit for some time, you realize that some of the development, a certain type of unit, uh, you tend to move. Okay, for example, a very good uh, uh, illustration is in uh, OCR property. Okay, we notice that a commonality in terms of the, the, the demand usually comes in a three bedroom compact and a three bedroom premium. Okay, especially for a three bedroom premium, if you had a yacht and storeroom, it tends to move faster. So that's why right over here, size matter. Because a lot of uh, development, okay, the, 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 if you buy into the wrong unit type, when it's come to selling, you will face more trouble. Okay, a very common uh, problem that we notice is especially for the one beta or studio unit in a lot of this kind of new launch development. Number one, there's a lot of units that will be in the market selling because a lot for investment. Number two is the demand for such units as a second uh, home buyer, I mean a second uh, buyer who's entering the market to buy such units it may not be as high. Okay, so this is something that you have to uh, look into. But in general case, the bigger the unit, the demand tend to be higher. This is something that you notice. But of course, it's case by case basis based on different development. So this is something very important to consider when it comes to buying the unit in the first place as a new launch and selling three years later. All right. So next, let's take a look at the third point. The third thing you have to take note of when it comes to selling a sub sale unit. Do take note, as I mentioned just now, it's not like selling a normal resale condo unit. Okay, this okay requires a new sales and purchase agreement. Okay, so how it works is this way. Okay, it's unlike selling a resale condo, which is just between a private owner and a private owner. 
okay, selling to one seller, one buyer. A uh, subsidy unit actually does involve a developer. So it means, right, the new buyer who is coming in into the picture to buy your subsidy unit must enter into a new SMP agreement with the developer because, as I mentioned, the unit has yet to be completed. Okay, which is one year after your key collection. So in this case, the developer has to be informed about this sub uh, transaction. Okay, and you have to uh, actually uh, sub out the original seller name with the new buyer name for this SMP. Okay, and good news because you are, uh, you are taking over during the one year defect liability period, the new buyer still do enjoy the particular uh, uh, privilege for this defect liability, where if there's any defect in the one year from key collection, the new buyer suit is able to rectify using this particular clause. But one thing to think about is, for this processing of this new SMP agreement, your legal fee will be higher. You'll be in a charge of 700 plus dollars, okay, just to allow this name to swap. Okay, so it's higher as compared to just buying a resale property. Okay, or even a new launch in some cases. So these are some things to take note. If you are looking into buying a subsidy unit, do take note that your legal fee will be slightly higher. All right. And last but not least, let's take a look at the very key important point. Okay, is that if you think of selling a subsidy unit, usually you tend to face a lot of competition in the market. So do take note because when it comes to selling a subsidy unit, especially in a big development with 1,000 plus units, there could be multiple, multiple listing that is listed in the market. And that's where things get a little tricky because you'll be swamped with a lot of listings, okay? And there are two kinds of listings that you have to uh, beware of, okay, in, as a competitor. The first kind of listing are, of course, your other competitor who's selling sub units. unit. Okay, uh, especially before kids collector, or even after kids collector, there'll be a lot of listings in the market for sale. They'll compete. So you need to know how to stand out from the listing, which is why it's very important to have a specialized a way to actually market a unit in order to have greater visibility. Okay, or else you'll just be another unit that's in the market that looks empty, it looks the same, everything looks the same. And that's when it comes a price war problem. So how do you let your property stand out against the rest? You need to find your unique selling point. And not just that, the second competitor you have to think note, which is a little annoying, is that some of the listings are actually fake listings. Okay, why so? Because uh, usually, especially on property grew, uh, a lot of agents will actually list it as a developer's listing. Okay, developer listing. Even when the unit is really fully sold out, the units are still there. So that they can hold on to more buyers to bring buyers to buy elsewhere. So with you can see even Florence by itself, within the development, there's total of four, six, eight units to buy at this current moment. So you're so with a sea of this kind of uh, listings as sub sale and listings that is from developer sales team who is just listing it and hoping to hook buyers. So the key thing is how exactly do you promote your, your listings, understand your unit selling point to stand up against the rest. And that's where you need to be able to market it in a different way with a different concept to stand up against the rest, okay? And with this, you also must understand a little more, even down to the numbers, okay? Where exactly is your demand coming from? Where exactly is the price in your price at? And most importantly, what is the, 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 the thing that stands out against the rest, okay? So for example, a very simple way is subsidy units, you, as, as not, 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 not to be, uh, not to be surprised, is that the most sub sale units districts are district 19 and 15. So these are the ones that you really need more creative uh, concept to sell. But of course, in areas like Jurong and City Hall, sub sale units tend to move a bit easier because uh, there's not many supply in the first place. So depending on areas, you need to know how to play to your strength and using numbers to, to I'll pitch your unit as compared to other units, okay? And this is also very crucial at times when it comes to buying your first unit as a deal launch in the first place, all right? So last but not least, some tips. So how exactly can you stand out, okay? But besides standing out, you need to take note, okay? Before you sell, check your seller stamp duty. Don't end up selling and realize, hey, there's this four percent tax, which can be quite hefty if you have two million property is eighty thousand dollars of you no know, pure hard cash is given instead of to your own pocket, it's given to the government's pocket because they have to pay for sales and duty. And the second thing is uh some cases, okay, if you do want to have uh, acute interest in CPF, some people actually use more cash for a down payment. Okay, so that 
if you don't use a CPF, your monthly interest, uh, acute interest for CPF won't accumulate to be too high. Okay. But last one least is it's important to engage a sales team that has great track record, especially for selling TOP projects or projects in general to leverage on the innovation to market the unit. So there's some things that you have to take note. Don't just uh, hopefully get just a listing and just lease and wait because in this kind of sales uh, units, it's harder to sell. It's not as easy, but the key thing is how exactly can you stand out? So with this, we'll come to the end of this video. We hope that you have understand a little more about subsidy units because it's not as simple and straightforward as a selling as a resale unit. So if you are keen to have updates in terms of real estate investment trends and a home tour video, okay, do scan this QR code right below to join our Telegram channel. You can see right here. And if you have any questions regarding your subsidy unit or TOP project, how to sell them and having troubles uh, even marketing it in the first place, okay, you can actually contact our number right here which will appear and what we can do is we will attach a broker that's suitable for you to help you to have a greater exposure for your unit so with this we'll come to the end of this video and i hope you enjoyed this series okay my name is christian and see you next time bye